world infected by a demonic plague only the sinless are immune. Let's get find out how it happened. First, turn on CC for subtitles. Second, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like these. Let's get started. A plague of infectious demonic possessions has taken over the world, and the few who are immune have been tasked to contain its spread for humanity's greater good. A man wearing goggles and a bandana covering his nose and mouth urgently rides a Harley Davidson motorcycle. He rides across abandoned towns and cities ravaged by the demonic plague. Outside a house, a department of meter readers disposal truck parks, and a worker announces for the neighborhood residents to bring out their heads before he dumps the contents of a garbage can into the back of the truck. Two human heads tumble out the garbage onto a growing pile. The man on the motorcycle, Dalton, arrives, and the department of meter readers employee tells him to turn back because he's in the red zone. Dalton says he's headed to Celestial Falls, and the man says he's too late because the devil beat him to it. He then pulls a lever that powers the flamethrowers, incinerating the heads. Despite the warning, Dalton continues toward his destination. When the infections began, people called it a hoax, but when it started to spread, theologians believed the gates of hell collapsing had caused it. The people who had proven immunity to the contagion had the burden of containing the spread and are called meter readers. That evening, at Celestial Falls, Dalton arrives at Mrs. Jones' residence, where he shows his credentials at the door before the woman lets him in. Mrs. Jones offers him some of the unappetizing food she is cooking, but he declines and wishes to get to the matter at hand. Dalton sees a picture of a girl on the refrigerator and asks if that's Mrs. Jones' daughter, Mercy. The woman confirms and lists Mercy's symptoms, such as not being herself lately, spitting on her, and speaking in a different language. He'll need to administer a test before determining if she's infected and hopes the infection hasn't reached the final stage. Then, Mrs. Jones points to Mercy's bedroom door at the end of the hall, and Dalton approaches it. Inside the bedroom, Mercy's four limbs are tied down to the bed, limiting her movement. She's able to answer the meter reader's questions coherently and asks him for help. He tells her not to be afraid of him, and she says she isn't because he has kind eyes. Seconds later, Later, Dalton takes out his meter wand from his satchel. The wand is a foot-long baton-like device with green crystals on one end. He asks her who she's afraid of as he hovers the wand over her body. She answers that what scares her doesn't like to say its name. Then, the meter reader takes out a mirror to aid in identifying what's ailing her. He moves the mirror around when he suddenly sees Mrs. Jones' reflection, revealing her true demonic form. Mrs. Jones laughs, and Dalton tries to exercise her, but the demon throws up on him and then bites off a huge chunk of flesh from Mercy's leg. Dalton takes out a mini side to take the monster down. A long, grueling battle to save Mercy and himself has just begun. Three days later, at Dalton's home, his wife Maria is completing a jigsaw puzzle with their son Mikey. Behind them, their daughter Teresa is listening to a podcast. She listens to the pundit reiterating that when the expulsion or exorcism of the demon from an infected person fails because they are too far gone, the only known method of containment is decapitation. Minutes later, Maria takes freshly baked bread from the oven, and Mikey says he heard school would be resuming in the fall. Seconds later, Teresa enters and calls what her brother said wishful thinking. Their mother supports her son's optimism and adds that salons are reopening next week. Moments later, Teresa expresses her concern that her father hasn't returned yet. Maria tries to reassure them that maybe some phone towers were knocked down by a storm, which is why he can't call them, but believes he'll send them a message soon. Teresa has checked the infection rates in Celestial Falls, which are off the charts. What his sister says worries Mikey and he drops his glass on the floor, startling Maria. She calmly tells him to go to his room and says she'll clean the glass. After Mikey leaves the kitchen, Maria tells Teresa to watch what she says in front of her impressionable brother. Still, Teresa thinks he deserves to know the reality that their father might not return. The mother reminds her daughter that Dalton is immune, and Teresa adds that he still needs to be reevaluated every 72 hours. Teresa asks her mother what if Dalton is dead or infected, and Maria tells her to stop saying such foolish things, unconsciously squeezing the glass shards in her hand. Teresa puts her foot down about maintaining her father's rule to not let him inside the house past 7 p.m. They both look at the clock on the wall that reads 6 15 p.m. Maria notices her bleeding hand and says Dalton will be back. At 7.02 p.m., Teresa watches the front porch security camera feed, and an alert on the screen detects an incoming presence. Outside the house, Dalton is wearing the hood on his cloak over his head as the alarm in the house goes off. Mikey excitedly runs to the door, eager to welcome his father home. Teresa stops her brother and says he's come home too late. Maria approaches the door, wanting to let her husband in, but Teresa is adamant that it remained closed. On the other side of the door, they hear Dalton say he's all right and to let him inside. Teresa answers that she can't because he gave them direct orders. Still, Maria establishes her matriarchal position, claims she'll give the orders now, and tells her daughter to get away from the door, so Teresa steps away. A few seconds later, Dalton tries to convince them he's alright, and his wife is about to open the door when Teresa returns holding a knife. She says she'll chop off her father's head if Maria lets him in. Maria explains that Dalton could perish out there, and Teresa argues they could all die in the house if they let him in. 
Maria then tells Mikey to go to his room, and the boy voices his anger at his sister before heading up the stairs. After Mikey leaves, Dalton pounds on the door and begs for his family to trust that he's telling the truth. Though Maria is conflicted, she tells her husband that he'll have to stay in the cellar for the night and get tested by the doctor in the morning. They hear him defeatedly back away from the door as Maria looks at her daughter disdainfully. Shortly after, Dalton heads to the cellar doors and pulls them open before descending the stairs to the dark room below. Later that night, Teresa watches the security camera feed where she monitors the cellar doors. She remembers how people didn't take the illness seriously, but families started getting infected. Her younger sister Madeline was infected and became a demon, so their father did what was necessary and decapitated her. Holy Disciples designed the meter wand to help identify the forces of darkness, but its power to determine the presence of evil came from the meter readers and not from the instrument. Only 10% of the population possess this gift, and even if people call them saints, Dalton says that's not what they are and that they're just regular Joes doing hero's work. Teresa recalls the first day Dalton left to be a meter reader. Mikey hugs their father and cries as he begs him not to go. His father tells him that he has no choice and that the fight for humanity's survival is bigger than them. He then tells his daughter to trust no one, not even him, because the devil is a master of lies. Afterward, he places his hood over his head and gets on his motorcycle. Later, Teresa wakes up when she hears the alarm from outside the house go off. When she checks the security cam feed, the cellar door is wide open, so she grabs her knife. Seconds later, Teresa heads to the kitchen and flips the light switch on the wall, but it doesn't turn on. Suddenly, Teresa sees Dalton rummaging through the refrigerator, and when he moves away from the refrigerator door, she sees that he's infected and has blood dripping from his mouth. Behind him are her mother and brother lying lifelessly on the floor. Teresa wakes up from the nightmare, and when she checks the security cam, the cellar door remains closed. Moments later, Teresa hears a noise from the kitchen. She turns the light on and is startled by her mom, who's silently cooking on the stove. Maria's making Dalton some food in case he hasn't eaten for three days, but her daughter thinks thinks it's a bad idea. Maria promises only to leave a tray of food by the cellar door, but Teresa wants them to be wary in case her father is in the final stage of infection and reminds her mother that the demons eat human flesh, starting with their own family. Behind them, Mikey passes swiftly unnoticed as his mother and sister continue to argue. They both turn to the front door when they hear it open and tell Mikey not to go outside, but he slams the door shut. Outside the house, Maria and Teresa see the cellar door shut close. Maria tries to pry it open to no avail. She screams for Dalton to give her back their son while Teresa heads back to the house. Shortly after, Teresa grabs her knife inside the house, and Maria asks her what she's about to do. Teresa says she's about to do what her father taught her. As Teresa walks to the front door, Maria knocks her out by hitting her over the head with a heavy table ornament. She then convinces herself that everything will be fine. Minutes later, Teresa regains consciousness and feels the pain at the back of her head. She touches the spot and is shocked to see blood on her hand. She remembers her father's words about the devil being the master of lies, grabs her knife, and heads to the cellar. At the cellar, doors, Teresa holds a knife in one hand and a flashlight in the other. She hears growling noises from the bottom of the stairs as she slowly walks down them. In the cellar, Teresa calls out to her family but only hears Mikey's giggle and Maria's laugh. She takes out a mirror and commands the demon to reveal itself to her, then she hears giggling and turns around to see Mikey wearing a devil costume. She asks her brother where their parents are, and he points to the right. She then turns away from her brother, who now has a pointed devil tail. Teresa continues down the direction Mikey pointed, following a trail of blood droplets on the floor and finds her father sitting on a chair. He then tells her that Maria and Mikey are hungry. He's weak, and his three days away from the family further delayed his chance of helping them with the infection. Seconds later, Dalton says his wife and son are carriers of the contagion, just like her sister Madeline. He knows she knows what she must do and takes out the meter wand. Suddenly, she points the flashlight to the ceiling and sees Mikey contorting and crawling. But then her flashlight turns off, and she taps on it until it turns back on. In front of her is Maria floating several inches off the floor. With a demonic voice, she tells Teresa that the salons are open in hell and shows off her long black nails. Maria floats slowly toward Teresa, holding up her hands as her daughter backs away. Behind Teresa, Mikey walks toward her, and as the two demons are about to trap her, she moves out of the way, making Maria scratch Mikey's chest and end his life. Maria sees what she did and cries for her lifeless son. Then, Teresa stands behind her mother and hacks at her several times as blood splatters everywhere. Moments later, Teresa walks over to Dalton and drops the knife. Dalton is proud of his daughter but soon succumbs to his injuries. Mournful, Teresa takes the meter wand from her father. The following morning, the Department of Meter Reader's disposal truck stops in front of the house's driveway. Teresa watches from the window as the man dumps her mother and brother's heads and incinerates them. Inside the house, Teresa listens to a news report about the rising number of cases worldwide and how much humanity
already needs the help of the immune. Afterward, she makes her way outside the house, covers her nose and mouth with a bandana, and rides her father's Harley. She knows soon history will sanctify her and her father's duties, but her work is just beginning. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share your thoughts about today's video in the comments section and make sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like these.